change. Africa is expected to become a luxury goods and fashion powerhouse. International goods companies are eyeing new consumer spaces. Silvana Bottega, CEO of the Southern Africa Luxury Association, is with me now with Nikki Katrakilis. Uh, is it Wager or Wa Wager? Wagner. Wagner. It's spelt wrongly on the screen there, so it's uh, Katrakilis uh, Wagner, an investor relations executive uh, at Hyprop, and Kanye Dlomo, who is CEO of Indalo Media and Indalo Luxury Ventures. So welcome to you, and let's start with you, Silvana. We spoke a while ago about this, and it's great to have you in Johannesburg to talk about it. The Southern Africa Luxury Association sounds like a club that I would like to join. I mean, you join and they give you luxury things is that how it works not what does quite. it do what does it not do quite um, what we do is we support various established luxury brands as well as niche artisan South African and African luxury brands in terms of their development uh, on the side of that we actually support their access to clients so mm. we work with various private banks and wealth managers to help to facilitate their growth on the African continent and we're particularly focused on the southern Africa location I always like to think in these terms when you've got an organization what's the problem uh, and what are you doing to solve it? Well, uh, a while ago I, I, lived in, I lived in China and I watched the growth of China and, and particularly the luxury sphere. And I think that, you know, Africa, whenever you talk luxury, inevitably you start having a conversation about the discrepancy between wealth and poverty. And what is happening is that we like to see the positive spectrum, which is the hope of a new aspirant middle class who's rising, uh, an affluent elite who are growing, and, and the hope of Africa in general. So yeah. we're really optimistic about where Africa is positioned, not just on the local stage, but equally on a global stage in terms of what we're producing, how we're actually reaching global markets, and equally in terms of how we're supporting brands that are coming to Africa to sell their goods. Before I go to Nikki and Kanye, and Nikki from the angle of, uh, of Hyprop, uh, how do you define luxury? Is it things that we don't need but we want and can afford? How, how do you define it? Um, for me, personal luxury is it, it's everything that is uh, that has an air element of authenticity that truly merits a higher price that is an object of beauty if it's an object mm. and if it's a service it's it's rendering something which is an experience beyond belief mm. um, oh, that's quite something <laughs> Nikki from the high prop point of view one doesn't think of high prop as a luxury purveyor of goods but there is an angle here and that is uh, luxury goods have to be sold somewhere that's right High Prop is Africa's largest retail property fund and we have 23 billion rand in assets under management and we own and operate 12 shopping centres across South Africa with the most recent acquisition being Somerset Moor in the Western Cape. In terms of the value add that landlords can bring to uh, this, the chain is to entice shoppers to, to come to your malls and to shop and to come back. So it's not only about the luxury brands, but about the luxury shopping experience. And that will extend, it will obviously start with the tenant mix to ensure that the retail offering that we are providing our shoppers is aligned with their, their wants and their needs. And then it extends to events and marketing. Um, so it's no use having a luxury outlet but it's surrounded by down market uh, activities or other shops. I mean, you, people don't want to get there if they have to go through uh, m surroundings that are not as impressive. Exactly, and the landlord also facilitates the social appeal of shopping. Mm. So it's about a world-class shopping experience, and I think high prop does Kanye, well. you're in the business, mm -hmm. so what are your experiences of it, and uh, what's your perception of this South African and African luxury market? We're quite new in the business from an operational point of view, but we've been looking um, at this industry and as at the sector for um, a number of years. Um, and what we've seen is that there is a lot of potential for luxury um, in South Africa, that South Africa um, is, is the gateway to the rest of Africa in terms of the luxury market, although uh, brands across the world are starting to look at markets like Nigeria and Angola very closely. Um, so from the Ndalo Luxury Ventures perspective, which is the company that owns Luminance, um, the luxury department store that recently opened in, in Hyde Park, which mm. is um, owned by Hyprop, um, we really want to position ourselves as um, the, the 
premium partner and a premium owner of, of licenses and distribution um, rights for some of the world's uh, top luxury brands, but also accessible luxury brands. Because I think in a market like ours, it's very important to approach luxury from a much more democratic point of view. We do have a traditional but smaller established market that can buy the most expensive brands, but we have much more um, potential um, lower down in the market of mm. people who are still moving up and want to enter the luxury There's space. There's a bit of a paradox there which exactly. we can return so to. Exactly. So just as we have two economies, I think we must look at yeah. the luxury um, space in South Africa um, much more broadly and that's how we've positioned Luminance. Um, I suppose at the top end, uh, if you have to ask the price you can't afford it, uh, that's the famous story. <laughs> Uh, and people who actually don't have to ask the price. They can buy whatever they like. Yes. But Silvana, there's a bit of a paradox here, isn't there? What can you said about a democratic luxury sounds like a contradiction in terms. Well, in a, in or a are way, we being politically correct here? In a, in a way, most of the personal luxury goods, they see a lot of their volume and value in accessories and in the, the, the entry level pricing for luxury. So if you look at China's growth on the accessories and handbags, that's really where they're seeing it. In that ultra niche, that's really the aspiration and where it drives. Um, in South Africa, on the luxury brands, we've got a spectrum and various brands are coming in at different price points. We're seeing more traction in the middle. Um, on the top end, they are more aspired to, however, not necessarily gaining as mm. much value. Mm. Um, it's becoming a much more competitive market, and I'm excited that Luminance has opened. It's, it's the first sign of a, a true high-end uh, multi-brand boutique uh, that and it's fantastic that it's come from uh, a South African holding company. Yeah. Um, I think there were a couple of questions in the market whether or not it would be an international multi-brand coming in first and I'm, I'm really excited about the developments and hopefully that'll be seen extending into Nigeria and, and Angola in the coming months. Of course you've got to be careful with aspirational. Um, mm. If I mean I've heard that the Porsche guy in Germany for example said we're making too many cars, we're selling too many cars. Yes. We need to reduce production in order to make maintain that, uh, that the appeal. Scarcity. Yeah. The scarcity. So just tell me a bit more about what you see as democratic luxury brands. And from what you say, you're across the sectors. I mean, it, could it be anything from whiskey to perfume to cars? Well, certainly what? not alcohol. Um, mm. we, we cover accessories, we cover books, we cover children's wear, um, women's wear, we'll be covering men's wear from July next year, mm. um, ex um, shoes and bags. Um, but what we do, for example, if you take a luxury brand such as uh, Marc Jacobs, um, Marc Jacobs has the main line where uh, price points vary anything from um, about uh, 12,000 Rand to 60,000 Rand. And then that same brand has Mark by Mark Jacobs, which is still has the luxury positioning and aspiration and price mm. points there are anything from about 3,000 Rand to 10,000 Rand. We mm. carry both brands. So, um, and then in addition, we carry the Mark Jacobs fragrances, mm. um, which are anything from 800 to about 2,500 Rand. These are all so new names to me. Exactly. Uh. So, but, but anyway, he's, so I, I think the, the example there is one brand that we've got at various price points mm. where different people can participate. And what we're finding is that even the person who can afford a lot wants more for their money these days. So they're not necessarily spending less in these tough economic times, but they want that 80,000 Rand to buy them much more. Mm -hmm. And so when you have that array of price points, you allow the opportunity for either the aspirant customer to buy that little something of three or 4,000 Rand that allows them to buy into the luxury experience, but you also allow the, as the, the, the established customer who has 100,000 Rand mm. to, to buy many more things because they can tap into these luxury mm. brands at many Nikki, different price points. Nikki, prop and its investments, I mean, one has to ask, do the luxury shops pay more rent than the other shops because they are luxury shops? But what about the African experience? And I've, I've got an article here talking about the number of millionaires and yes. dollar millionaires, more to the point. I mean, being a Rand millionaire is not so exceptional anymore, but dollar millionaires, I would think, are. Johannesburg, $23,000 millionaires. Cape Town, 9,000. Lagos, 10,000. Um, 280,000 millionaires in Africa, apparently. Now, surely there's an opportunity here for property developers, in concert with other people, obviously, to go beyond South Africa. There certainly is, and in terms of high prop, we do have exposure to Africa, in particular Ghana, through our shareholding in Atterbury, Africa. So there's certainly an opportunity for um, 
luxury brands to expand into Africa. And there is a statistic that millionaires in Africa over the next 10 years will grow by 117%. Mm. And on the back of that statistic alone, I would think that luxury brands are looking at Africa as its next growth market. Mm. But are we looking at South Africa, Silvana, as remaining the, the sort of access point? That so, you know, all these dollar millionaires in the rest of the continent of Africa are actually going to come to Santon? to get their stuff into places like uh, Kanye's uh, outlet. Yeah, it's Hyde Park Corner. Hyde Park Corner, <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm biased. I'm South African. Oh. So um, I think that if I look realistically long term, I think that Nigeria is really starting to show signs that it's actually going to surpass sales. Um, however, the development of South Africa is at a much later stage. Oh. So w on a global stage, we're still lagging behind. But in terms of Nigeria and Angola, we're still fa really f fairly far, far ahead, and particularly due to our retail experience. Mm. Um, and I think that's really driving what our differentiation is right now. But we are seeing a lot more growth and a lot more sales happening in Nigeria, particularly in the drinks market and the beauty, beauty category. Kanye, uh, you, had, you ran into a controversy with funding. Um, tell us about that. What was the issue there? Uh, was it unfair, uh, the controversy? And it was funding from the IDC, I think. Uh, from the it? National Empowerment Fund. National Empowerment Fund. Yes. Sorry, mixed those up. We were talking about the IDC earlier yes. this morning. So they gave you some money, lent mm -hmm. you some money, yes. uh, and the view was, you're, you're a luxury operator. Why do you need to borrow money from <laughs> the National Empowerment Fund? Well, I think some of the views were, were, were understandable in that I don't think that enough time and effort has been spent in explaining what the National Empowerment Fund does and who it can or can't empower. Um, but essentially, um, my view is that we, we're um, a credible operator. We've uh, put together a good business plan that we've been working on for some time. Um, we, we put in um, a significant amount of our own investment as the shareholders. In fact, it's the highest contribution by a shareholder in the history of the NEF ever. Um, and, and we've launched a business that um, is creating employment. Um, it's encouraging brands. Uh, how many, how much brands. employment? Um, it's direct jobs, about 51, but in terms of indirect impact, if you consider that with one job in this country, at least four or five people are positively impacted, um, then I think that impact is meaningful. But I think there's a broader benefit. Um, and the, one of them is the fact that we're, we're causing international brands to look at us more closely. Mm. Um, a lot of them are still focused on Asia because it's a much bigger market. They want to come into South Africa, but they would rather come in with a partner um, or you know, have an, a local operator who helps move that strategy forward for them while they focus their personal resources on, on Asia. Um, a number of those brands are now looking at investing in the country directly as a result of the relationship um, that we've built up um, with them. Additionally, we are investing um, a lot of time and effort in ensuring that a lot of those brands come here to South mm. Africa. So Carolina Herrera Dubai is the daughter of Carolina Herrera has recently been here um, and two or three other brands have sent people out to provide training um, mm. for our staff. Okay, so clearly there so, are so beneficial I think there are a lot of benefits, but naturally, um, you know, an, a newspaper article can only be so long, mm. and it can only focus on um, the most sensational parts. Um, but we have no doubt that with time, people will fully understand. Um, also, the fact that we're giving a platform to South African artists, uh, to South African designers, mm. um, and to South African craftspeople. That's still a very small segment because there's a lot of education needed even mm. to the South African luxury shopper that you can combine Alexander McQueen with David Tlale mm. and, and so on. But, but it will take these, time. These names and, uh, escape um, me. But <laughs> I'm going to ask uh, Silvana to, to summarize the, the business case, the, the investment case, the effects of this investment in, in uh, luxury goods. But Nikki, just first of all, the, the, uh, uh, I'm still interested in how you make shopping centers suitable for this kind of shop. And how does a Hyde Park, for example, is the whole of Hyde Park a luxury destination with many luxury uh, venues inside it, shops? And are some uh, of your shopping centres, there's a pocket that's luxury and the rest isn't? Well, High Prop's focus is on high quality shopping centres. We do have a pocket that is seen as a value or a lifestyle centre, but certainly across the portfolio, Hyde Park Corner emerges as the island of luxury. So there are a number of luxury brands either housed under one name, for example, in terms of luminance, or their standalone stores like uh, Thomas Pink mm. and Mont Blanc will be opening later this month. So Hyde Park is certainly uh, 
it sets itself apart from the rest of the portfolio in terms of some of, of these shops is uh, like where you need to take out a bond to yeah, buy a shirt I mean, but I want to now I want Silvana to wrap oh, up okay. now we're short of time right. so just to wrap up the business and investment case I think at a macro level South Africa and in fact Africa and the Middle East are still a nominal small share of the global market so it's 212 billion total uh, a million euros, um, and and that's that's a billion euros. Sorry, that's and that's still uh, we're still less than five percent of that in Africa and the Middle East. Mm. Um, in most annual reports for global luxury, we Africa is hardly even uh, segmented out. In time, I'm hoping with the developments that are happening both at the retail level and at the individual brand level of brands going out of South Africa, uh, South African luxury brands and equally international luxury brands coming to market through the likes of Luminance and Hyde Park, that we're going to end up seeing a lot more interest in Africa as a real market and equally with reputable dealers like um, uh, like Kanye being able to handle those brands when they mm. do enter.